everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of The Insiders on Real Estate and Marketing. And today we're coming, Troy and I, from our homes with our special guest, Crystal Levan. She is of the luxury home team at Keller Williams. And today we're going to talk about everything luxury. Um, if you've missed any of the past episodes, you can check them out on YouTube. But to get to YouTube, you need to first go to our website at theinsiderspodcast.com. Or if you're on IG, just go to Insiders Podcast. We've got it all there for you. And as we all know, we're in the middle of the coronavirus crisis. So we're all working from home. And I do want to give a shout out to Real News Public Relations for uh, their accommodating us by allowing us to do the Zoom recording. Then they're going to take it and do their magic. Their, their team is all working from their offices at home as well. They're a super group of people. So hopefully um, here soon, we're going to flatten that curve and we'll all be back to normal. Um, real estate has been deemed essential. So I know that Troy and Crystal have been working. So um, as I have been too here from my home. So welcome everybody, Troy, how in the world are you? What's going on with you? Uh, it's been a crazy month. I mean, let me just say this before our last shooting, um, it's been a month ago, the world was yep. a completely different place. Wow. Yeah, no, things were, things were rolling and uh, the brakes uh, kind of got put on in a hurry. So, um, you know, we just got to stay positive and do as much as we can virtual. We're all being forced to work a little bit different uh, than we have in the past. You know, we, we like to go to the office and be around people and, you know, we're in a relationship building business and not that we can't do that on Zoom, but, um, you know, I prefer to be, you know, out in the field, out in the battleground, uh, you know, with my buyers and sellers. Uh, but this is a, a short term adjustment, hopefully. It really is. So what are you doing to stay in touch with your clients right now? And how are you virtually set up? It's for other agents. I'd like to compare what you're doing virtually. Sure. So, I mean, the first thing is, you know, shout out to, uh, you know, our, our team leaders, Tommy and Teresa Flood. We're on uh, every morning at 8.30 a.m. Uh, Zoom, and then we're also on with the region uh, at 8.45 a.m. So just trying to keep everybody, you know, sane and together uh, and accountable. And um, again, that's been great, just the mindset. Uh, you know, Crystal and I have talked offline about, you know, trying to stay positive, and, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later. But just checking in, you know, it doesn't have to feel like a, a recruiting call or a sales call. It's just a, you know, Sandy, how are you? How's, how's family? How's the baby? Right. Uh, you know, what, what can we do to stay positive and, and stay together? Yeah, absolutely. I'm doing the same. I'm, I'm getting more into videos. I've been uh, committed to doing one or two videos a week just for my clients and sending that also out to my database. So I'm looking at what content that, that I'm seeing is really important for continuing your marketing right now. Uh, since I'm a marketer, that of course is going to be uh, my focus. If you're a realtor, I think that that opens up the door for a lot of other things that you can bring virtually to your clients and to your database. So staying in touch though is to me premier. I think right now to make our clients and our prospects and our sphere of influence feel comfortable about what's going on and to let them know that, hey, real estate is is essential right now. So we're still working. I think it's important so, so much to uh, bring that content to our people virtually. Yeah, and, and I've had a lot of people ask me, these are, you know, I've got four or five sellers that, you know, I haven't lost them. They haven't, you know, canceled their listings. Uh, two of them have gone temporary off the market, and we have a touch plan on uh, April fifteenth. Okay. Let's just see how the let's see how the first two weeks of April go, and That's then we'll good. decide if we are going on or are we going to huddle back up um, on April thirtieth. A um, couple out of state buyers that uh, are not traveling here for in person work meetings. Therefore, you know, they're not here physically to look at homes. I have previewed a couple homes uh, for them, so it isn't like nothing is getting done. Um, you know, we've got a we got a pretty decent April pipeline built up, and it's you know we were on a on the regional call yesterday. I don't remember the gentleman said that you know, hey, we're in survival mode. You know, my advice would be do everything you can to hold what you have in escrow together to get it to the table, because obviously those commissions are going to be crucial. Uh, not knowing what you know May and June look like. But if you completely check out now and just fold up shop, 
you know, you're really, really going to feel that, you know, in, in the next 90 days. So, um, you know, people say, well, how in the world are you showing houses? It isn't an overabundance of houses. I had a buyer last week. Um, luckily, about 80% of the homes we were showing, um, you know, they were vacant. But, you know, we're, I'm in a mask and I'm in gloves and, and they're in gloves and, and I'm going to open the door. I step away, let the, let the couple uh, go through the house together. I go back and lock the door. And then obviously we get on the phone while we're driving to the next house to go, okay, guys, let's talk about that. You've got your rating system. Is that a possibility or is that just a no-go? Again, it's not quite the, the level of service and communication that I'm used to because I'm used to touring the house standing you know right next to them but we've all got to be smart uh you know and we've all got to be safe um i'm going out to one of my luxury listings uh tomorrow morning and i'm going to shoot some additional video uh above and beyond what is there before it's so it's a point for me to get back in the home uh to show the seller that i'm still working and that i'm still you know got eyes and ears on the property in person um you know i'm communicating with other agents who have listings around there uh, and, and the same thing, it goes back to the listings that are holding, um, you know, until April 15th or April 30th. The ones that are still on the market, you know, I'm reaching out to competing agents listings and saying, hey, Sandy, how many showings have you had in the last, you know, 28 days? What has it been like? Not that that house is showing is going to be a direct reflection of, of my listings, but it speaks to the community. It speaks to the price point and it speaks to the traffic. Uh, of what's going on, you know, in that in that immediate area. Very good, very good. I'm also uh, seeing the importance of the virtual tours right now. Uh, you yes. don't have to stop showing houses. People are still buying homes and they're still needing to buy homes for people who are moving into the area or have just moved or had that ball rolling before all of this started. So um, it's very important for agents to get out there, get the virtual tours done on their home and get them out right now to keep that interest in those listings. I don't think a listing has to go off the market necessarily. Uh, depending upon all of the different circumstances that are involved around that, but definitely, definitely get out and get virtual tours. I think that's very important. I've got a photo shoot going on literally as we speak down in the colony, and you know the house is you know 15 years uh, old, so we don't have the builder floor plan from you know whoever bought the house first. Um, you know we're bringing in the Matterport technology. Uh, I don't do that on every listing, but this is a two-story house, and again, you got to show your sellers that you know you're committed to spend a little bit of extra money for technology to to bring that in to help the buyers get a feel for you know what's out there with that house, just because. Not everybody's out, you know, looking at houses. Absolutely. One last thing before I bring our special guest on is, you know, our business plans as they were, Troy, in January aren't going to work now. So I think it's really important for agents to take some time, uh, not being afraid, don't be scared, but look at those plans, look at your marketing plans, and it's time to pivot. It's time to make some changes and look deeply at what you projected in January. It might even be that we need to pull back for a few weeks to see what rolls out here. And then we're going to have to readjust moving forward. And it's not gonna be based on what was in January. It's gotta be based on what it is and the reality as we move forward. Well, and, and at KW, obviously the book Shift is out there and, and that book was written you know, around the time of the 2008, 2009 financial crisis. And we went through some, some challenges in our industry. You know, that book is, is as relevant you know, now as it is you know, then. We all know this will pass. We just don't know how long it is. So again, I, I agree. You know, your your business plan needs to be looked at and focused on, and you cannot give up. You just got to adjust and, and and move forward. Yeah, so true. Well, Troy, I know that you have been uh, working with Crystal in the luxury market. So let me bring her on. Um, we've got a wonderful guest today. Her name is Crystal Levan. She's from, like I said earlier, Keller Williams Luxury Home Team. And uh, Troy and I had talked and felt like it was really important to address the luxury market because Dallas-Fort Worth, as we know, is huge luxury market. There are lots of beautiful homes here and there's lots of money here, lots of transactions happening in that area. So what's happening in the luxury market? So to address that and to have that discussion with us today, we're bringing on Crystal LeVan. Crystal, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. Shout out to Troy for inviting me um, in this ever evolving market that we're in right now <laughs> that has become very interesting and, um, 
One thing I want to say that I've been thinking about a lot lately is everyone's talking about their goals and whether or not they should be adjusting their goals. And I've heard both sides of the stories. One thing I do think is very true is if you are not, if you're not going to adjust your goals as we kind of move through this pandemic, you have to adjust your activities. So I just encourage everyone to evaluate um, what their current activities are. And if you're going to keep your goals, I'm keeping my goals where they're at right now. I just know that I have to beef up my activity and those activities are changing because we are now in a digital real estate world. So um, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there before we dived into luxury. To jump off into all of this, how is the luxury market here in DFW being affected by this crisis? What are you seeing? I think that there are, there's still a large number of luxury consumers that have an immediate need. Um, they have to buy, they have to sell. Um, so we are getting more creative on focusing on how to maximize the exposure on those listings, um, how to virtually get the buyers into properties without having to physically go. So right. all that business is, is still moving. The market is still moving in that regard. And then you have the individuals who um, don't necessarily have a time constraint on when they have to buy or sell. And we're seeing those people just push pause. So it's not like they're saying, I'm going away and not coming back. They're just pushing pause for right now to kind of just see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that's, it's kind of like that across all price points right now. Right, right. Yeah, it makes sense. So I know we don't have numbers for March yet from Keller Williams. Um, I love their uh, market reviews and market snapshots that they do, but you, they're usually from the last month. So based on what the numbers were last month and what you and Troy are feeling out on the street right now, what are the numbers looking like? Are, are they, are there any, first of all, is there any new home builds going on? Has that come to a halt? And just give me an idea of the overall numbers in the market right now. Troy, jump, jump in on this too. So I have a couple deals right now that are under contract on new construction and it's business as usual. Um, we haven't seen any slowdown on the construction. Construction, as far as I understand it, has always been deemed an essential business. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen any closing date changes on that. Now, with that being said, um, we've had a lot of rain. So depending on where the consumer is in that home building process, my properties were already foundations poured and framed. And so we're still hitting our close dates for those. Um, I, I guess I would say if I had to pinpoint specifically what has I've seen dramatically change is the number of showings. And I think a lot of people have immediately jumped on um, getting into the virtual game. There was a lot of us that were already in the virtual game. So I think that one big lesson to learn out of this time um, is video is new and going to be the wave of the future. And, and in some markets, it'll be more impactful than in others. But now that the consumer, I think, has had a taste of it and how they can start touring homes from the comfort of their house, if you're not getting into that and using this time to, to grow that, you're going you're gonna to get left behind when we're re-strategizing after all this is over. With the interest rates being so low right now, is that something that you're seeing maybe attracting more luxury buyers or luxury investors to this market even right now? I would say interest rates are definitely attracting. A lot of the luxury buyers are cash, honestly. Um, so, and they're, they're in a position, I feel like, we were on a call yesterday with Leslie Akers, who is the director of KW Luxury International. And she was saying that, you know, we're seeing some, we're seeing some stuff slow down, but that's not dictating there's gonna be price drops. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a seller um, you know, in the one to $2 million price range going, is now a good time to sell? Am I going to get maximum value as long as they're in a market like we are here in Dallas, where the supply is lower than the demand? Mm -hmm. It's always a good time to list at that point, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion. And um, like days on market, I, I pulled a couple stats um, because not everything is out yet. But for example, Properties listed between 1 million and 1.5 million in Dallas County. Average days on market in 2019 were 14. Wow. And um, in 2020, it's gone to 20 days. It's hard to track right now because I feel like we, uh, COVID hit us mid-month. 
And so I think there's going to be, there's going to be more trends coming out as we get into like mid April to really see what we're looking at. But as of right now, we're not seeing um, a huge shift on days on market. Um, and we're not seeing a huge shift in prices. But if you had a $3 million home, would you think now would be a good time to list it or would you hold off? Gosh, I think that's a trick question. <laughs> no, I think it's really a lot of uh, variables, right? It's absolutely, it's so specific to that particular client situation. And I think as a professional, it's more important now than ever to ask the right questions, to dive deep and say, what is your situation? What are your goals? You know, because there's so many moving factors in it. Um, and without asking those questions as a real estate consultant, you're not able to give them the best possible game plan and solution. Right, right. Very, very important, I think. I think that that communication, again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, staying in communication with those clients right now. Um, how do you see the luxury agents, uh, Troy, this question for you as well, um, pursuing listings right now, or are they? Well, I think anybody who's you know not pursuing listings is just waving the white flag. You have to show that you're different. I mean, I went on a listing interview. Um, it wasn't luxury, but it was you know in that four to four fifty range. The other agent didn't feel comfortable um, going out, and, and I get that. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have a problem with that. Again, there's a way to do things the right way and and the the reckless way and. I chose, you know, I chose to go. Um, they're they're uh, they're downsizing. They're building a new house, so there's an opportunity, um, you know. And I asked them the questions. I asked them as much information beforehand. You know, what updates have you done to the house? Um, you know, I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not going to shake your hand. Um, you know, I'm not going to. Can you have all the lights on? Have all the doors open? Right. Do as much as you can, just because again, we don't know what we do and don't have. So just be smart, be careful, but yet you got to stay engaged. And, and again, not everybody would agree with, you know, my method of even showing houses last week. But as I've said before, we in real estate, we turn the dollar over big time. So many things, you know, are affected from home inspectors to lenders, to appraisers, to home warranty companies, to builders, title companies, uh, furniture companies. I mean, we all, you know, we turn the dollar so hard Try to stay engaged as, as engaged as you can, but be smart and safe about it. Yeah, absolutely. So, Crystal, let me ask you, what, since COVID-19, uh, being in the middle of that right now, what are you seeing are ways in the luxury market that we can bring more value to our clients, prospects, uh, the basic luxury world as a whole? Well, I think um, focusing on, on providing um, exponential exposure right now since online digitally is vital on these luxury listings like being able to like with Keller Williams being being a Keller Williams um, international luxury specialist we get access to any of our listings over 750k are going on the Wall Street Journal they have 470 million unique visitors um, c-suites top top wealth individuals looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way of getting exposure. We have options to get exposure globally because in our Dallas market, we have a lot of international buyers and relocation um, clients moving in for corporate businesses. And so I think being able to operate very proficiently and provide our clients maximum exposure digitally on the listing side is absolutely vital right now. And it's really gonna show value to the seller because um, we're not doing open houses and some of the traditional stuff that we've done in the past. Right. Um, and also, I would say, and this sounds so simple, and I'm sure as real estate agents, we all think about it, um, being hyper aware of what's trending in the local market is so important right now. Because in the past, as a real estate agent, you know, we would just pull comps um, and we would look back you know, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, sometimes in the luxury market where there's unique properties, we'll go back a year or we'll expand our territory a little bit to find similar properties. Mm -hmm. And now that we're going through COVID in this situation and in this market that we've never gone through before, that data is not going to 
not going to pull the same information as it as we need now. Last year in spring and even 30 days ago in February, we can't be pricing our new listings based off of that. And I'm not saying that they're automatically going to be worth less than what they were at that time frame. It's just that we have to be watching the market in a different way. Um, I think that a lot of what I'm looking at right now in the market, I'm watching market trends every day. I'm looking at what's, what's new on the market, how many have expired, what, what are price reductions looking like, what are days on market. Um, and as you look at that every single day, you're really growing your knowledge base of how can I position my listing? What do we need to be priced at? Because showings are down too, obviously. Now, the interesting thing about showings are there's a lot of agents who are in the game who are doing things virtually and that's not being tracked. So in the past, we would go on to showing time, which we're all usually members of, and we can pull actual showing data of the appointments that were scheduled through the service. Now those appointments aren't being scheduled. And so there's certain bits and pieces of information that us as professionals would normally pull to track that we don't, that information has changed and it's not really trackable right now. So um, just staying hyper aware of what's going on in the market um, and being in, being in communication with other top luxury agents and other agents in the market and talking to them about what they're hearing has been a huge attribute to staying in the game. Because this is where building a community of agents inside your brokerage, providing them with content, information, um, education on the market, like you just were talking about with uh, Keller Williams and what you guys are doing there and your meetings that you have in the morning. This is so important for agents to have that, I think. So brokers, if you're listening, I think that this is a really important time to step up and provide this information over and above what you normally do for your agents. Um, so you're saying identify channels for out-of-the-box marketing, right? Um, know what channels that you can provide more coverage, more awareness of those listings, and then be hyper-local on your content for uh, information in the market right now. I think that's, well, let's, let's talk about what agents can do right now during this crisis to uh, expand their social media marketing, to expand their brand, Let's say that I'm Agent X and I was I just finished getting my luxury designation and I had all these plans and I had all these things that I was gonna do and now I am deflated. I'm at the bottom. I think that my, my chance for luxury is over. Um, what kind of advice would you give those agents that are starting in luxury and then for the agents who are in the luxury market, how can they broaden their brand during this time? So I joined the luxury brand um, <clears throat> about mid-January. So again, I, I'm new to it. And I think now that when I say things have slowed down and we've got plenty of time in our home offices, um, and I learned a lot yesterday being uh, on the Zoom call with Leslie Akers and the entire KW Luxury International group about the statistics that, you know, Crystal read off and all the tools and the resources. I was on a, um, a KW Luxury orientation. Uh, actually, it was on March 16th. Well, I remember coming off the road from a, a KW train the presenter class on the Thursday before. That's when everything got real serious where, you know, the NBA canceled their season and, you know, college basketball said no tournament. So right when all this hit was the time that I was going through the orientation. And the last couple of weeks have been a little bit of, you know, scramble mode, as I mentioned before. But now taking the time to create your your luxury brand you know the first 90 days of being at keller williams was sandy you and i changing you know changing the logo and changing the brand and getting everything you know the signs and the cards and the letterhead and, all that. and then it was a shift into luxury and now this so that's actually what i'm doing this afternoon is i have started to revise um you and i have started to revise the the luxury listing presentation that I'll use specifically for, you know, homes that are 750 and above. So I'm not going in there with the same listing presentation that I'm going in at 450. So it's, you know, get your arsenal ready to go because this thing is going to open back up and there's no excuse not to be ready when you've had this time to create it. Um, Crystal, I want you to address that, but I want to just say we've got five more minutes and then we're going to have to close the show. 
uh, we're going to end this thing with each one of us giving you three takeaways. So guys, be thinking about that. Three takeaways from today. But before we get to that, Crystal, how can an agent expand their social media awareness that's working in luxury right now? I would say that one thing is that I've learned is that you're going to have clients um, on different platforms that don't co-mingle. And so you're going to have a group of followers that are on Instagram. Those people are going to be way different than LinkedIn followers. And those people are going to be different than Facebook. So coming up with a game plan, you can have the same message on all three platforms mm -hmm. initially to make it simple, but just what now more than ever, it's important for us to show value. And I think where our value is at, is explaining to the consumer what's going on in the market, um, identifying um, the trends, and then offering advice and um, game plans and services and relationships and vendors and resources and all that stuff and just being a point of value right now. Mm -hmm. So when the time comes, and it will, they're gonna, they're gonna have you top of mind. So for me, that's videos um, and just keeping videos um, I'm trying to do three to four videos a week and they're short, they're under two minutes and it's just providing value. Sometimes it's addressed in, in the real estate world. Sometimes it's um, business owner tips and tricks because I have a lot of clients that are business owners. Just staying in front of people. Um, um, we're also calling people and we're sending out cards so people can get something in the mail. Um, and I think that again, communication is so vital right now. One other thing I would say too is, and this is this would probably be one of my top threes, is just that um, you should have a strategy between now and the next 90 days. And it's gonna be different than how you've done business in the past. Mm -hmm. And then you should also have a relaunch strategy because when we come out of this, it's gonna be different as well. And if you can have all that stuff in place, you're gonna do you're gonna be fine. Fabulous. So name me those three things again. So have a 90 day strategy of how your business is gonna be different um, during social separation or social distancing. Have a relaunch strategy for when we come out of this and then have a, have a daily plan to stay, in top, stay on top of all your people with social media. Awesome. Troy, your three takeaways? So what I've done is um, I have a real estate agent. Uh, she's an accountability partner during you know, a time of, of crisis, if you want to call it that. And it's basically just stay connected with her and hold her accountable to what are you doing today? You still have to prospect. You still have to, you can still do mailers. You know, you can still stay in touch with people. Um, you got to believe that this is going to pass. Um, move around. I literally... I don't know if you recognize this, Crystal. I've literally moved my desk in my home office to a different direction after two weeks just to have a different view and a different perspective. Also, those those people like me who absolutely hate to work out, I don't get a high at the gym, I don't get a high, you know, lifting weights or doing resistance training. Um, I created a, 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 a goal for the month of April, I am going to log 60 miles. I don't care if it's walking, running, or run walking, or speed walking, counting your steps, whatever it is. Good for and you. It was three miles on the first. It was three miles yesterday. It is three miles starting at six o'clock today. So the good news is I'm going to lose some weight just because I'm not going to cave in and sit on the couch and, and watch TV. So th those are my three. Cool. All right, guys, we're going to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. My three things are communicate, 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 and chill out. I mean, I think that uh, as we're communicating, as we're educating, as we're taking our actions and our activity, don't freak out, chill out, and let that chill out feeling get across in all the things that you're posting. Remember, we're all better yes. to Let's help each other. We'll get through this thing and it's going to be better on the other end. So let's see what life can teach us during this time. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. It's the insiders on real estate and marketing. We'll see you next month.